I am Homo sapiens. The first known ice age on Earth is called the Huronian Ice Age, which occurred approximately 2.4 to 2.1 billion years ago during the Paleoproterozoic Era. It is believed that this ice age came about due to the Great Oxidation Event, which led to a significant increase in atmospheric oxygen and a decrease in methane, a powerful greenhouse gas. This resulted in a drop in Earth's temperature, as mentioned in a previous video. Around 825 million years ago, the supercontinent Rodinia began to break apart. This process continued for millions of years until the Cambrian period. Initially, this caused large volcanic eruptions on Earth. The atmosphere began to warm again, and the increase in greenhouse gases intensified the greenhouse effect on Earth. The lava from these volcanic eruptions cooled and turned into a specific type of rock called basalt. Basalt is primarily composed of silicate minerals such as plagioclase, pyroxene, and olivine, which are rich in elements like silicon, oxygen, aluminum, calcium, and magnesium. Continuous rain and storms on Earth caused this basalt to dissolve in water and flow into the oceans. Volcanic ash from these eruptions also accumulated on the ocean floor. Over time, the presence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere decreased again, attributed to heavy rains, large storms, and continuous oxygen production by cyanobacteria and other bacteria in the oceans. As the levels of methane and carbon dioxide increased by volcanic eruptions decreased, the greenhouse effect on Earth diminished significantly leading to the Second Ice Age around 800 million years ago. This Ice Age lasted for a long time, and Earth went through several Ice Ages for approximately 80 million years. At that time, there was still no life on land, but life had been developing in the oceans for billions of years. Between 600 to 800 million years ago, Various types of organisms had evolved in the oceans, and eukaryotic organisms were now found on the ocean floor. Around 100 million years after the breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia began, a new type of multicellular organism, considered to be among the first multicellular organisms on Earth, started to develop. In the previous part, one such organism, the sponge, was discussed. Fossil evidence suggests that this organism evolved around 600 to 800 million years ago. At that time, sponges were present in large numbers on the deep ocean floors of Earth, and stromatolites were also abundant. Sponges and stromatolites were settled all over the ocean floors rich in calcium and silicon. Ediacaran Period the fossils of the Ediacaran period are known for their various unique life forms that existed before the Cambrian explosion, representing some of the earliest known complex multicellular organisms. These fossils are primarily found in the Ediacara Hills of South Australia, the White Sea region of Russia, and Newfoundland in Canada. Dickinsonia is one of the most famous organisms from the Ediacaran period. It was a flat, oval-shaped creature that could grow up to a meter in size. For a long time, scientists were puzzled about whether Dickinsonia was an animal or a plant. However, recent analysis of cholesterol molecules found in Dickinsonia fossils revealed that it was an animal. This discovery places it among the earliest known animals on Earth. Although much about its diet remains unknown, scientists believe it might have absorbed nutrients through its body surface, as it did not have a digestive system like modern animals. Possible food sources include unicellular algae and microorganisms. Kimberella had a flat, oval body with small scale-like structures on the surface. It used a muscular foot to move along the sea floor and resembled a snail. Initially classified as a jellyfish-like animal, it was later considered a mollusk. Its main food source was microbial mats, and fossil evidence suggests it scraped microbial surfaces. The study of Kimberella indicates that animal lineages had already diverged by 555 million years ago. 
Yalingia spiciformis fossils were first discovered in 2019 in southern China. This long creature resembled a combination of a millipede and an earthworm. Its tracks are preserved in rock, indicating its movement on the seafloor, making it one of the oldest known animals capable of making decisions and moving independently. Yalingia had distinct front and rear ends and a clear left and right side, making it a bilaterally symmetrical organism. It could be related to panarthropods or annelids. While not much is known about its diet, it might have been a filter feeder or a detritivore that consumed organic material deposited on the seafloor. Claudina belonged to the early metazoan group called Claudinids, part of the small shelly fauna. Its shell was composed of millimeter-sized calcium carbonate cones. Claudina was one of the earliest organisms with a mineralized skeleton, which served as protection against predators, as evidenced by attack marks on fossils. This indicates that there were predatory organisms in the seas at that time, although no specific predator has been identified. Charnia, which had branch structures and was believed to be attached to the seafloor. The structure of their bodies included tubular branches with fractal patterns. They spread rapidly like plants and possibly absorbed nutrients from seawater through osmosis. According to scientific research, this was an extinct group related to animals or fungi adapted for osmotic feeding. Additionally, trace fossils of many other organisms such as Tribrichidium, Sprigina, Swartpuncha, and Treptichnus have been found, and research is ongoing worldwide to gather more information about them. Most of the fossils found from the Ediacaran period are trace fossils. Trace fossils, also known as ichnofossils, are geological records of the biological activities of organisms. These include footprints, burrows, feeding marks, and feces left by ancient organisms. Unlike body fossils, trace fossils provide evidence of the behaviors and activities of organisms, indicating how they lived moved, and interacted with their environment and other organisms. This video also attempts to create illustrations of these organisms based on the latest research on trace fossils.